Welcome to this training mission in which we will talk about the basics of the air-to-air -air radar in the F-15 Strike Eagle. Please wait for the mission to load properly. I'm not going to waste your time with a technical description for all of the data on the AN-APG-70 radar and its capabilities. You can find all that in the manual. Instead, let's jump directly into the jet and learn the most important aspects of the radar in the air-to-air -air mode. You can see that the air-to-air -air radar screen is already displayed on the left MPD. You should also see two contacts, likely denoted by a triangle, at roughly 40 and 25 nautical miles respectively off your nose. You can easily tell the distance to a contact at a glance by referencing the currently selected radar scale, in this case 80 miles, as indicated by the number in the top right corner and the horizontal lines on the display. Each of them equals a quarter of the selected scale. Therefore, for 80 miles, they'll show 20, 40, and 60 miles respectively, going from the bottom to the top. To change the scale, you'll use the TDC controller on your throttle, which allows you to move the target acquisition symbol currently sitting in the middle of the screen. However, to be able to do that, you have to first take command of your radar. Do it now by pressing and holding the castle switch left. Good, you are now in command. To increase or decrease the range, simply move the acquisition symbol to the top or the bottom edge of the screen. Please try it now and let me know when you set the scale to 20 nautical miles. You should now see a small arrow at the very top of the display indicating that one of the contacts detected by the radar is outside the currently selected scale. As you move the acquisition symbol around the screen, there are several moving parts we should have a closer look at. In the top left, the two changing numbers are bearing in range in nautical miles from your aircraft to the location of the acquisition symbol. The two hollow dots along the left side of the screen are called the radar beam altitude coverage circles and show the maximum and minimum altitude that the radar beam is covering with the current settings. The digital readout of these altitudes is constantly shown next to the acquisition symbol. You will notice that the further away you move the acquisition symbol from your jet, the higher the coverage and vice versa. But while the distance is an important factor here, there are at least two other things that play an even greater role, which are the number of bars and elevation of the antenna. The number of bars can be set to 1, 2, 4, 6, or 8 using push button 2. As you increase this number, you'll notice that the antenna elevation scale, the two hollow dots, get further away from one another, thus allowing for greater vertical coverage. The downside, however, is it takes longer for the radar to complete full sweep. Antenna elevation can be changed using the wheel on the throttle. Move it up and down and see how the values for minimum and maximum coverage change. The green elevation carrot on the left side of the screen shows the angle at which the antenna is currently pointing. Go ahead and play with the elevation and number of bars for a while. We have talked about the vertical coverage. Now let's have a quick look at how wide the normal beam is. In normal mode, it covers 120 degrees in front of the aircraft but it's possible to narrow it down to 60 degrees using a method called azimuth bumping. To azimuth bump, simply move the acquisition symbol to the left or the right edge of the screen. You notice that the two dots at the bottom of the display are closer and can be moved left and right using the TDC. Note that it only works in SRM and MRM modes. Finally, to return to full 120 degree scan, Move the TDC once again to the left or right edge of the screen. Take a moment to play with those options. Alright, now set the full coverage, bars to 4, elevation to 0, and scale to 80. Let me know when you're ready to move on.
you to again see two contacts on the screen at roughly 25 and 40 miles. Go ahead and place the acquisition symbol above the one closer to your aircraft. Number 19 should appear next to the contact, indicating its altitude. If you do the same for the one further away, it should show 31 or so. You'll also notice that both contacts become brighter on certain sweeps of the radar and stay dark for others. They will light up only when painted by the beam as it sweeps through a bar corresponding to their altitude. If the bar is too low or too high, they'll remain dark. The number of frames dark contact remain on the screen can be changed using push button 3. Go ahead and see how it works. The last important setting is the Pulse Repetition Frequency, or PRF, which can be set to high, medium, or interleaved by pressing push button 6. In the simplest possible terms, the high PRF is mainly used for seeing hot, nose-on contacts, whereas medium is best for seeing maneuvering targets or targets that are not nose-on. Interleaved constantly alternates between the two. Okay, time to lock one of those targets and enter the Single Target Track or STT mode. To do so, move the acquisition symbol over the desired contact and short press the TDC. The radar will enter a mini raster mode, and if it scores enough hits on the target, it acquires a lock. Let me know when you've achieved that. Several new symbols should now be visible on the radar screen and on the HUD. Starting with the HUD, you should see the target designation box at the location of the locked target. To the right, you have a range scale with lots of weird symbols you don't have to worry about at this stage, as we'll cover them on some other day. The changing number on the left side of the scale is the closure, or VC rate. The target's altitude and digital range are displayed to the right. Similar information can be found on the radar screen. The target is denoted as a star with a heading vector or a flake symbol if it's trying to jam the radar. Its altitude is displayed at the left edge of the display, and closure rate and range scale are shown along its right edge. Now, to drop the lock, simply depress the automatic acquisition switch. Do it now. Very good. Okay, the last thing will be a little practice in using the radar settings to find and lock a helicopter that's circling at 5,000 feet over the water, around 15 nautical miles away from us. Set the bars to 4, scale to 20, and PRF to medium, and position the antenna to cover the minimum altitude of 2,000 feet. Can you see the radar signature of the helo? No? And no wonder. The helicopter is a slow moving target, and as such, it's difficult to pick up by the radar. But don't worry, as the smart people over at Raytheon added the option called GMTR, or Ground Moving Target Rejection, to help us in situations just like this one. What does it do? It allows the air crew to make the radar more sensitive to slow moving targets, with the downside of allowing more ground clutter and false targets appearing on the screen. The GMTR setting can be changed by using push button 4. Press it three times to set the GMTR to low. If the elevation is set correctly, you should start seeing some returns. If you move the acquisition symbol, you'll see their altitude, some of them at minus one, zero, or one. You should ignore them as ground clutter and continue searching ahead of you for one flying at four to 5,000 feet. Feel free to decrease the number of bars and closely watch the digital altitude readout. 
Your goal now is to lock that helo. Let me know when you've done this. Well done. I mean, relatively well done, considering you didn't have to fly the jet because the sim was paused, and you didn't have a thousand other things you normally would, but still not bad. Thank God during the real sortie you'll have a Wizzo who will be doing this job for you. 